Hi, and thanks for listening in. My name is Steve Monowitz, and I'm the director of the Planning and Building Department for the County of San Mateo. Thank you for the opportunity to share more information about Connect the Coastside, San Mateo County Mid Coast Comprehensive Transportation Plan. This 15 minute presentation is intended to provide you a quick and easy way to learn more about the Connect the Coastside Plan. In this presentation, my colleagues Katie Faulkner and Shonda Singh will give you a short overview of the plan, tell you a little bit about the history of this planning effort, describe the types of projects that we are recommending in the plan, review next steps for Connect the Coastside, and share comments we have heard so far and talk about how you can participate. Once again, thank you for taking the time to learn more about Connect the Coastside. Now I'll turn it over to Katie. Thank you, Steve. Hello, my name is Katie Faulkner and I'm a long range planner with the County of San Mateo. I will now give an overview of the plan. Let's start with the planning area for Connect the Coastside, which is shown in purple on this map. The planning area shows where Connect the Coastside has recommended projects and includes the unincorporated areas surrounding Highway 1 and Highway 92. The plan focuses on the unincorporated mid coast, which includes the communities of Montera, Moss Beach, El Granada, Princeton, and Miramar. The orange color shows the area used to create the traffic analysis for the plan, which helped provide the traffic information we use to create some of the recommendations in the plan. So what topics does the plan cover? Connect the Coastside is a comprehensive transportation plan, which means it makes recommendations to improve walking, biking, public transit, driving, and land use on the Midcoast. The benefit of Connect the Coastside is that it will create an overall vision for transportation on the Midcoast, and it clarifies the priorities for future transportation investments. When considering which projects to recommend in the plan, we want to take into account the values that we have heard are important to people who live, work, and visit the Midcoast. We want to recommend projects that, taken all together, will improve traffic, enhance safety, increase choice, sustainability and coastal access, and preserve mid-coast character. Now I'll talk a little bit about how we got here. The initial stimulus for Connect the Coastside came out of the Mid-Coast Local Coastal Program update back in 2012. This update called for the development of a comprehensive transportation management plan to address the cumulative traffic impacts of development on roads and highways in the Mid-Coast. The Connect the Coastside project started in 2014, and over the next few years, the project team produced several reports that projected future development on the Midcoast, analyzed current and future transportation deficiencies, made recommendations for transportation improvements, and analyzed the idea of installing roundabouts in certain intersections. In 2019, staff worked on putting together a complete draft of the plan and a public draft of the plan was released in January 2020. All that previous work included extensive public outreach and feedback, including a virtual workshop, several in-person public workshops, Board of Supervisor meetings, Planning Commission meetings, Mid-Coast Community Council meetings, and Technical Advisory Committee meetings. And all that public feedback helped to shape the Connect the Coastside project to date. And now that we have re released a public draft of the plan, we are looking for feedback from people who live, work, and visit the Midcoast. And we will use this feedback to make updates to the plan. So recently, the County of San Mateo and the Midcoast Community Council released a survey that asked people, when it comes to getting around the coast side, what is working well and what's a challenge? We pulled a few quotes from that survey to paint a picture of what traveling around the Midcoast is usually like. For what is working well, people said the Coastside Trail, bike paths, light traffic on weekends, on weekdays, excuse me, Sam Trans, and living in a beautiful setting. For challenges, people mentioned traffic on weekends and during rush hour, very little public transportation, crossing Highway 1 on foot, and incomplete bike paths. That gives you an idea of what getting around the coastside is like for some of the people who filled out our survey. 
Our goal with this plan is to address those kind of transportation challenges that people face in their everyday lives on the mid coast and make things better for current residents. Now I'll turn it over to Shonda to talk about some of the projects recommended in Connect the Coastside. Thanks, Katie. I'm Shonda Singh, a transportation planner with San Mateo County. Now we'll take a high level look at Connect the Coastside's recommended projects, which are aimed to improve walking, biking, driving, and transit. Let's start with walking. The draft plan recommends building the parallel trail, which will be a physically separated multimodal trail along the east side of Highway 1. The parallel trail will connect Montera, Moss Beach, El Granada, Miramar, and Half Moon Bay so that people will be able to walk and ride their bikes between these communities without having to use Highway 1. The plan also recommends installing several marked crossings across Highway 1 and adding sidewalks where they are missing to create continuous walking paths. The plan also recommends completing the coastal trail throughout the entire study area. Moving on to bike related improvements. The multimodal parallel trail will serve people who ride bikes in addition to those who walk. The draft plan also recommends bikeways on Highway 1 throughout the Midcoast area and on Highway 92, including bike lanes on Highway 1, adding a shared lane bike route, a striped bike lane, or a separated bike trail along Airport Street, widening the shoulders of Capistrano Road to better accommodate cyclists, increasing space for bicyclists along Highway 92, and installing bike parking throughout the mid-coast. To improve driving in the mid-coast and along Highway 92, the plan recommends adding turn lanes and acceleration lanes at Graywell Cove, adding left turn lanes at major businesses and extending the passing lanes on Highway 92, adding stop signs at side streets that intersect with Highway 1, adding roundabouts or signals at certain intersections with heavy traffic along Highway 1 and Highway 92, and making improvements to Main Street and Montera and Carlos Street in Moss Beach to slow car speeds and make those streets more friendly for walking and biking. The plan also recommends creating new standardized roadway designs for Highway 1 near populated community centers. This would include adding curb and gutter to define the roadway edge, ensuring consistent travel lane widths of less than 12 feet to help slow motorists and adding raised medians to create safer conditions for all road users. The plan also recommends transit improvements, including improving bus stops by adding benches or shelters, making it safer to walk to bus stops by adding marked crosswalks and sidewalks, working with SamTrans to improve transit service for the mid coast, and developing a multi-purpose parking lot, which could be used as a park and ride for commuters during the week and by visitors on the weekend and during events. Finally, Connect the Coastside recommends several land use programs to reduce development, or offset the traffic impacts of development. A lot merger program could reduce the number of lots and homes built on the mid coast by merging neighboring lots with the same owner if the individual lots are too small to meet current development standards. This would result in the creation of single larger parcels resulting in more on site and private open space. The lot retirement program could help reduce mid coast development by requiring one to one retirement of development rights on existing lots in exchange for the creation of new lots subdivided from another property. And lastly, the plan recommends a transportation impact mitigation fee to collect money from developers who build on the mid coast. These fees would help pay for projects included in Connect the Coastside and serve as a potential deterrent to development. Thank you, Shonda. Now I'll talk about how you can participate and next steps. The Connect the Coastside project team wants to invite you to join the planning process and provide feedback on the draft plan. We have already heard some feedback that we plan to incorporate in the next update of the plan, including addressing safe routes to schools and making it easier for kids to walk and bike to school, and addressing emergency evacuations, sea level rise, erosion, and exploring programs to reduce transportation demand. One way you can participate in planning for mobility improvements on the mid coast is by attending the public virtual meetings for Connect the Coastside. At the meetings, you'll have a chance to learn more about the plan, discuss the proposed projects with fellow attendees, and let the project team know what you think about the proposed projects. We're interested in hearing from people who know the mid coast best. What we got right, what's missing, what are your highest priorities? We will be holding three meetings. The first meeting will be on May 30th and will be an overview of Connect the Coastside. 
The second meeting on June 15th will be focused on Moss Beach and Montera areas. And the third meeting on June 25th will focus on El Granada, Miramar, and Princeton. You can attend all the meetings or pick and choose the ones you're most interested in. You can find more, de more details about the meetings and information on how to register at the Connect the Coastside website. Now I'll review next steps for Connect the Coastside. Right now, we're in a public outreach phase of the planning process. And like I said, we'll be holding several online public meetings to gather input on the draft plan. Staff will then update the plan based on the feedback we hear. Updates could include finding recommendations, adding new projects, or adding new information. After updating the plan, we will review our public outreach efforts to date and decide if any more public outreach is needed. After the public outreach and update processes are complete, we can then begin the final draft review process. This includes presenting the plan to the Midcoast Community Council and the San Mateo County Planning Commission for their recommendations. Lastly, we would take the plan to the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors to consider approval. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us and visit the Connect the Coastside website for more information and to submit comments online. Thank you for the opportunity to share information about Connect the Coastside.